the annual prayer breakfast is one of the Macon County Senior Citizen Center's biggest fundraisers each year. This year's featured speaker is a highly accomplished eye surgeon who's overcome major obstacles in his life. Another large crowd attends the 2019 prayer breakfast in Lafayette. It's a chance for the Senior Citizens Center to continue functioning with financial donations from the local community. It's also an opportunity to hear about each year's featured speaker's faith in God. For Dr. Ming Wang, his life story is simply incredible. Raised in communist China, he didn't know if he would ever escape to the United States, the land of the free. But as he says, with God's help, he was able to one day call America home. We are living in the greatest country on this planet. But sometimes, as human beings, when we always have something, we can take things for granted. Sometimes we forget what a blessing to be able to live in America. Who appreciates sight the most? Those who used to be blind. Who appreciate freedom the most? Those who used to not have freedom. I'm someone who used to not have freedom. And I want to share with you a little bit of my history, how I was without freedom, and came to this country having realized how precious freedom is. So I'll tell you a little bit about where I came from. What's this? Great Wall of China, yes. China is about the size of the United States. Forbidden city where the emperor used to live. This is a photo of my family, mom, younger brother, dad. I was at the back. I'm from a city near Shanghai, China. We're a very poor family. The combined salaries of my parents every month was only $15. So we're very poor. But mom and dad always said, study hard, study hard, me. Education was the way to get out of poverty. So it was in the family that focused on education, where education was everything, when 1966 disaster occurred. 1966, the communist dictator decided in China the best way to keep on dictating is to shut down all universities and colleges of entire China. Can you believe that? For 10 years, from 1966 to 1976. And forcefully deported every single high school graduate to the poorest part of the country and condemned each one of us a life sentence of hard labor and poverty. Over 10 years of cultural revolution or cultural holocaust, really, it destroyed the future of 20 million young people by having shut down universities and colleges of the entire China for that 10 years. 1974, I was 14 years old. I finished my ninth grade. I was a straight A student. And mom and dad always said, study hard, study hard. So they pushed me very hard. So I never had a B, but that made no difference. When I finished my ninth grade, Looking for attending 10th grade and beyond, the deportation order came down to me. The government kicked me out of the school, and I was going to be sent away for life. Labor camp for life. Not just me, 20 million others. In order to escape this devastating fate of labor camp, I started playing a Chinese violin, a two-string instrument, called Erhu. Because it turns out if you can play an instrument or if you can dance, you might be able to get into what they call communist song and dance propaganda troupe. If you could do that, you might be able to avoid being sent away to labor camp, being then be allowed to stay in the cities because communist government still need musicians and dancers in the cities for its propaganda troupe. I got so stressed out, mom and dad said, we're going to help you. So during the daytime, they were working very hard. At night, they borrowed many old exams. But we were so poor that we didn't have money to Xerox, anything like that. The combined salaries of my parents every month was only $15. So what mom and dad did, they found little pieces of paper throughout the house using pencils, hand copied those questions onto little pieces of papers, and drilled me every night with little pieces of papers containing those questions. 
They made me study 19, 20, 21 hours a day. Almost killed myself studying. But I was driven by this glimpse of chance for future. So I put everything I had. I did barely get into college, all right, but I did not want to have anything to do with the communist dictators anymore. I suffered enough. So 1982, with $50 borrowed from a visiting American professor, with a student visa, I was dropped off at National Airport, Washington, D.C. With that $50, with a Chinese English dictionary, knowing no one in this country could hardly speak English, but it's a big American dream. I had good fortune attending some of the wonderful schools in this country since then, but my work in the last 30 years serving my patients have been based upon the appreciation of freedom, appreciation of America. These are, for example, are the textbooks that I published over the years in cataract and LASIK surgery fields. You know the instrument, the Chinese violin I used to play during Cultural Revolution Escape labor camp has truly become a hobby. The journey started in a communist nation, and today, Dr. Wang is thrilled to call the United States home. And what a difference he's made over the years with patients who have severe eye problems. To see the entire prayer breakfast ceremony, please visit NCTC's Facebook page, or you can also watch it on YouTube as well. Reporting from Lafayette, Barry Hyatt, NCTV.